This is a closed down Sonic. Um, and since it's been closed down, there was a particular uh, blood set uh, that had developed in this area. The individual that started it, he's currently in jail. He's, he's, he's going to trial on the, the um, he's the one actually that we did the search warrant on that I, I brought you to where um, for the recruiting. Yes, the Enoch case where the recruiting and announcing him his gang and, uh, gang's presence in the community by using via the internet. Okay, and now there's some gang tagging from his set here, as well as there's some other tagging that you'll see that's not gang related at all. I'll, I'll point out specifically the ones that are gang related. Uh, with graffiti, a lot of it's just signatures like this is what to somebody's weird squiggly signature as they're marking or whatever. The TP life or the TB life, meaning true pie or true butt life, <coughs> a lot of people, a lot of officers or business owners or people in the community really wouldn't know what that meant unless they knew that they were looking. I, I knew that that was because I knew I was looking at a blood set and so I knew that was, I knew what this was about. I was looking for this stuff particularly, that way I knew it was associated with that particular blood set, but as we go around this corner, and as I mentioned earlier, I knew the name of their gang set. So because the number is 0725 was in the middle of the name of their gang set, I recognized this. Plus, I also recognized that this signature emblems here of theirs was part of their um, alphabet. They have letters meaning other letters, and they also happen to have symbols meaning letters. So I recognized this as well. And with the TB life here and having the five little, little dog ball here um, and it has five little digits on it representing the people in the Asian five which the bloods fall under same one on this smaller one here and that that is something to look for I have an idea who's doing this gang tagging um, I know who did some of it I know this person's probably in jail the person with the feminine writing doing the TB life I'm not sure who's doing that. Like I said, I have an idea and I just can't really put it on them at this time. So you know that, okay, I, based on this and, and what I've seen, I've got bloods in this neighborhood in this particular area of Gainesville. And with that, I know that traditionally I'm gonna have dope sales, uh, firearm thefts from burglaries, sellings of the firearms, um, you know, uh, with those burglaries, you know, anything that could be, that they could sell on the street. You have two people in Alachua County and just in the last three years with the growth of gangs in Alachua County and only two guys, they get pulled in different, we get pulled, I'd say they, but it's it's myself and Detective Lalonde, we get pulled in different directions and trying to follow up on different investigations. Say, for instance, we'll get information on our blood sets that are out in the southwest area of Gainesville. And as we try to follow up on that, and we're working cases trying to develop more leads on that, the problem we'll run into is we're getting information from the jail, so we have to go out to the jail and possibly uh, look at some graffiti found inside uh, some cells related to the black gangster disciples or the crips and we follow up on that we're following up on white supremacist activity interviewing people at the jail there or out in uh, on the county line between uh, this Alachua uh, County and another county so there is you know still to this day you know, we're always having you know, which should not be a surprise to anybody, but I guess it would surprise some people. We have the issue with hate groups. We have people, you know, getting out of prison that are part of criminal street gangs or prison gangs or what they call security threat groups in the Department of Corrections. Uh, this is called Holly Heights. It used to be called Cedar Ridge. Um, this is nothing but blood territory. For instance, a good example would be you know, this guy's always wearing red. That's all he wears. He's always wearing a red shirt, a red hat. Um, he's always wearing red beads around his neck. He's always got a red bandana on his right side. He, you know, he, you know, you see a lot of that in this neighborhood. So it's not like you're seeing one young man wearing that. You're seeing him and his buddies and all that. And that's that, that's when uh, an individual in the neighborhood can go, hey, you know what? Tell a deputy or you know, tell an officer, hey, look, 
you know, these guys, um, they're always in this neighborhood, they're all always wearing red. I, they're, they're all wearing red bandanas, whether it be uh, a lot of them wear it on the right wrist, but the majority of the time it's hanging out of their right pocket. It's always going to be on the right side. And if you see that, they're not going to wear around, they're not going to wear the red on their left. They're just not going to do that over here. And so if you see that, that's something you can call in. All right, here we're going to see some older graffiti. Uh, this area out here, before the uh, you know before the bloods grew as big as they did, you had an area, you had this area called Out West, and you see they tagged Out West there. Now there is a gang on the east side called Out East, um, and they were not well accepted by people Out West. And you're going to see that as we come through here. And on this wall it says Out West, and then F Out East. Okay. So I say right now for the, our area of you know of Florida being in Gainesville, we've had more violent crime and more problem out of the Bloods. Oh, this is Tower Oaks. You're not going to really see any graffiti in here. Um, you know, but just one particular neighborhood that you know you get a lot of activity in. It depends on what part of the street you're on or you know, what cul-de-sac you drive into, you know. We'll park here. Yeah. A lot of this stuff has faded out, but uh, our shooting was on this street the other, um, last night or night before when we had it. This cut through was used like all day long, all night long, to get from this side and back and forth uh, to buy dope, or there's a couple of what they call bootleg apartments over here. Oh, yeah, okay. that's definitely. If they want to argue anything about the gang-related tagging that's faded out over there, this is definitely gang-related. Like I said, there's a blood territory. So they're saying, F you to the Crips. This is definitely a violent area. Definitely gang territory. Where, is, where are we now? This is Majestic Oaks, which is right off Southwest 20th Avenue. I think the 5800 block, if I remember correctly. People are gonna probably scatter and walk as we ride up. Yeah. See the guys in front of the door? All right, the one guy stood up over there in front of Building K. See, they're all headed in. The one stayed there, the guy in the white shirt and shorts, he, he went inside, the two on the back porch, the guy in the red is still there. And as soon as he saw the car. Majestic Oaks is not one particular gang, I mean, that has that area. That's kind of like no man's land, or it's kind of like everybody's area. You know, I've, I've got Bloods there, i got Gangster Disciples in there, I've got Latin Kings in there. I mean, they're just, it, it's kind of a, a mixture of everybody in there. So, there is some graffiti on the, um, I was told, I just remembered about it, but it's kind of far off. And um, over at P.K. Young, uh, out east tag P.K. Young's wall, that wall that goes through the apartments and the complex, mm -hmm. they put out, they spray painted out east over there. And that's, you know, that, that was, some, yeah, that's, that's the most recent tagging we've heard about gang related. And Rich is the one that said that, you know, chasing, we, he felt yeah, like he was chasing yeah, ghosts. Bet. And that's where I kind of, uh, got the terminology and, and brought it up to you you know I, I got that from rich and uh, where he originally came up with it i don't know but that's exactly how it felt he was dead on with that one because it really felt like you know it was almost like saying i saw bigfoot and nobody wants to believe me and i'm like no really bigfoot's right in front you know i just saw him you know and like sure you saw him sure you saw gang members sure the guy wearing a red bandana every day you know sure he's a gang member man he's just trying to be something he's not he's just showing out he's just pretending you know but uh you know until you investigate further and you see it's real now you have a little bit more but still it it, it took almost three years it took three years to, to for us to get where we're at now and we've made huge steps but we're still nowhere where we need to be not even close